This video is an overview of Pokemon Automation and on how to set it up with a wired setup. This video will go over the topics listed on screen. Chapters and timestamps will be in the video description. This is open source software that allows you to automate actions on your Switch. This uses a microcontroller like an ESP32 S3 or Arduino and a computer. The way it works is that the microcontroller acts as a third party controller and sends button presses according to the program. This works for both Switch and Switch 2. With this software, you can automate repetitive portions of the game. These programs can do things such as shiny hunting, egg hatching, resetting for specific IVs for legendaries, or farming resources such as money, EXP candy, EV reduction berries. With automation, all of this can be done while you sleep or while you're at school or working. First, we'll talk about the hardware. Here's the list. We will talk about details in the next slides. In terms of where you can buy the components, you can buy it at DigiKey, Mouser, Amazon, AliExpress, or your local hobbyist electronics shop. In the video description, I will also post links to where you can buy the hardware. First, you will need a computer running 64-bit Windows 10 or later on an x64 CPU. In other words, it must have an Intel or AMD CPU. You cannot use an ARM CPU such as a Qualcomm Snapdragon. The automation programs do use computer vision to read the Nintendo Switch video output, so the computer needs to be sufficiently powerful. The recommended minimum is a computer with a quad-core CPU at over 3 GHz, no older than 2015. If you intend to control more than one switch, you will need a more powerful CPU with more cores. As of this recording, support for Linux is limited. It can be done, but you need to know how to run command line build scripts, which is outside of the scope of this video. So this video assumes you have a Windows computer. For macOS, refer to the guide on our GitHub. Next, you will need a Nintendo Switch with a dock. The official dock works. Third-party docks may also work. The Switch Lite will not work because we need video output. Note that you can use a regular Switch or Switch 2. It does not need to be hacked. No modifications or of the switch are needed. Next, you need a video capture card. This takes the signal from the device, like the switch, and converts the signal into a format the computer can understand for recording. For the purposes of computer automation, most cheap capture cards do work. In contrast, higher-end capture cards may cause issues with color detections, uh, such as those from Elgato or Avermedia. Ensure that, that the capture card is capable of a video output resolution of at least 1080p at 30 frames per second, but ideally at 60 frames per second. Next, you need an HDMI cable. This allows you to connect your switch dock to your capture card and or TV. You may already have this. It comes with a switch. For the wired setup, you need the ESP32 S3 microcontroller. Make sure it has S3 in its name. It should have two USB ports. See the links in the description for some examples. There are many variants of the ESP32 microcontroller. Make sure it's the ESP32 S3. For example, don't get the ESP32 or ESP32 S2 or ESP32 C2, etc. Next, you need two USB cables, one to connect the ESP32 S3 to your computer and one to connect to the switch. Also, the cables need to support data transfer, not just power. So if you're using cables that you're not sure about and you're having issues with your setup, swapping out the cable might be something to try when troubleshooting. The ESP32 S3 can have either micro USB or USB-C ports. So find out what you have before buying the cable for it. You will need either two USB-A, two micro USB cables, 
or two USB-A to USB-C cables. For example, suppose your ESP32-S3 board has two micro USB ports. In this case, you will need two USB-A to micro USB cables. So here we can see two different ESP32-S3s with different ports. USB-C on the left, micro USB on the right. Sometimes the product description doesn't say whether the ESP32-S3 board has USB-C or micro USB. So you'll need to rely on pictures to determine which is which. Alternatively, if you use the links in the description or on GitHub, we have labeled for you the type of port that each board contains. Again, here is a list of everything you need. And there are links in the video description to online sites where you can buy these components. Now we will start the general setup. Let's download the computer control program. Go to github.com slash Pokemon Automation. Click into the computer control repository. Go to releases. Download pa0programs.zip. Make sure you get the latest version. Next, unzip the file. Open serialprograms.cmd. You might get this pop-up warning you about the program. If you don't trust us, you can read the source code since the program is open source. If you do trust us, just click Run. Now we'll set up video. Connect an HDMI cable from your Switch dock to your video capture card. And connect the capture card to your computer. It should look like this. So switch to HDMI cable to capture card to computer. In the computer control program, click one of the programs on the sidebar, such as the virtual console. Then click Reset Video and select your capture card in the camera dropdown. It should be called something like USB Video. So now I'm going to connect my capture card to my computer. Clicking Reset Video. And now USB Video. You might see these color bars. This means you need to turn on your switch. Make sure your dock is powered on as well. So I'll just turn on my switch to make sure this works. So we can see that it works. To set up sound, click Reset Audio, then choose USB Digital Audio. Audio input is important for programs that need to listen for sound. This is needed for only some programs. On the other hand, setting up audio output is completely optional. It allows you to play music through your speakers, but it does help you to make sure that your audio input is set up properly. Now we will connect the USB cables to the ESP32-S3. One cable goes to the switch, and one cable goes to the computer. However, there are two USB ports. They are not interchangeable. So you must connect the right ones to the right places. The two ports are usually labeled, sometimes on the front, but usually on the underside. It might look like this. So you can see photos of the underside, uh, make sure you connect the USB or OTG side to your Nintendo Switch, while the COM and UART side goes to the computer. Once again, it should look something like this.
Depending on exactly which ESP32 S3 model you bought, you may need to install UART drivers. This allows the ESP32 S3 to communicate with your computer. First, let's open up Device Manager. So let's go to Control Panel, then Device Manager. Look for your device under Ports. If you don't see it, then you might not have the correct driver installed. So in my case, we do see it. And if I unplug my ESP32 S3, it disappears. If I replug it, it reappears. So we know that's this is that we know that this is my ESP32 S3. So if you do need drivers, it will either be usually a CH340 or CP210X depending on what model of ESP32 S3 you have. If you don't know which one you have, just install both. I will show installing both drivers. So let's first go to the wiki on GitHub where the download links are posted. So we'll start with CP210X. Then we'll use the x64 installer. Now we'll install the CH340 drivers. So that's it. Now we will flash the firmware to the ESP32 S3. Again, make sure your ESP32 S3 is connected to your computer, as mentioned previously. Let's download the Espressive Flash utility. And extract. Select ESP32 S3 in the drop down. Keep it as develop. Press OK. Check the box in the first entry. Click the dot dot dot. Then locate the uh, PA bot base ESP32 S3 dot bin in the serial programs download folder. So make sure it's ESP32 S3, not the ESP32. Then put a zero in the rightmost box. The top row, the entire top row should now be green. At the bottom corner, select the COM port. So in my case, it's COM3. You can confirm this in the device manager. As you can see, COM3. Then change BOD to 460800. Then click Start. Uh, then we wait for this green progress bar until it's finished. Then you need to reboot to your ESP32 S3. So you can either do this by pressing the EN or reset button on the ESP32 S3 or you can unplug all the cables to the ESP32 S3 so it loses all power, then replug them. If you do unplug the cables, make sure you don't mix up the cables when you replug. If you see that it gets stuck printing out dot 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 in the console here, 
and it never makes progress, then see the troubleshooting section on GitHub. You will need some combination of holding the boot and reset buttons on the ESP32 S3 board. So if you scroll down, here is our troubleshooting section. Now go back to the computer control program. Click reset control. So uh, make sure serial PA bot base is selected. Choose the COM port, COM3 in my case, and then make sure it says wired controller. If it says connected, yes, ready, yes, then that means your ESP32 S3 is now connected to your switch. You should now be able to control your switch with your keyboard. So just click the, the screen here and you'll have control. To see the keyboard controller mappings, click on keyboard layout. To change the keyboard mappings, click Nintendo Switch, click on framework settings, then scroll down and you can change it here in keyboard to controller mappings. If you are unable to connect the computer control program to the ESP32 S3, or if the ESP32 S3 fails to connect to the switch, make sure you review the troubleshooting section in the wiki on GitHub. So again, it's this section. It goes over some of the common issues when setting this up. Another option is to post in our Discord server. You can post in the Arduino help or Arduino chat channels. Link to the Discord server will be in the video description. Now that the setup is done, you can run the programs. So back in the computer control, you can choose the game that you want. So for example, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Then choose the program that you want to run. For example, item printer RNG. Within each program, you can also find a link to the online documentation, which explains how to set up and use the program. And I recommend you read this for every program you do use. So that's it for this video for setting up Pokemon automation using the ESP32 S3.